Hey everyone, Miss Janine here. Uh, great job on week one. If you haven't had a chance to get in there and do the assignments for week one, please get in there. You know, week one's the easy gimme. As long as you do the work, you're probably going to get a hundred. So don't forget to do week one. Let's go over week two. I want to make sure you know everything that's due this week. So if you click on the weeks tab, this will appear. And then you can click on it. And we've got our discussion question. Now remember, when you're answering your discussion question, use complete sentences. Use two references. So you earn 10 points using two references with in-text citations and citing your references in APA format. So since you have to use APA format to get the 10 points, you need to write in paragraphs, not fragments, not, not a lot of bullets. You can have a few bullets, but explain them. Make them complete sentences. And remember, your post needs to be 150 words or more to be in the exceptional category. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch the video I posted on the grading rubric for the discussion post, I encourage you to do that. Now let's look at what activities are due this week. Whoops, sorry. All right. We've got a couple things we've got to do. Sometimes I forget how to use this. All right, you got an essential questions discussion. This week we'll, we will discuss essential questions, formulate a response to each essential question. What is a job, why is a job analysis important? I can't talk, it's too late in the day. Now you are to create two essential questions you think will help you focus your writing on your portfolio project. Be Briefly discuss how your questions will guide the development of your portfolio project. So. To answer this or to learn more about your portfolio project, you're going to need to go to week one. Activities. Portfolio project and rubrics. I encourage you to read the entire document. It's nine pages. And you're actually going to want to probably print this out. This assessment is worth 30% of your grade. So it's imperative you really look at all of these due dates. Lots of things do. Lots of parts do. Talks about the course outcomes. I'm not going to read this all to you, but when you read through this, you're you're going to, I guess the best way to say it, you're going to look, you're going to explore jobs that you hope to get when you graduate using your degree. You're going to be using ONET and the information you get will later, week three, you're going to do a critical analysis of resources. You're going to look at the occupational handbook. You're going to look at ONET and really look at what do employers want? What skills do they expect you to have? What's the salary? But before you do that, we got to do week two. Why is a job analysis important? Analysis important. Right here, job analysis is the foundational exercise in personnel psychology. Two approaches, job oriented and person oriented. Person oriented, blah, blah, blah. And again, you can read through this and you're going to have two questions. Two essential questions to help you with your research. You know, an example might be, um, I know most, many of you are in the health services administration field, I believe, HSA. I think I saw many of you type. Usually we have some business managers. Um, so a couple of essential questions. 
what do employers want? What skills, be as specific as possible, what skills do employers want me to have upon graduation? What, uh, another essential question, how will these questions, again, discuss how your questions will guide the development. While using ONET, you will know what employers want. You'll be, um, you look through here, some other things. I encourage you to look at week five, because this is what the outline for your project or your job analysis report will include. Brief description, specification, years of field, all of this you'll get from ONET, most of it. Pro projected growth for the job. So the things you need to answer in week five will help you, knowing what you need to answer in week five will help you with your questions. The other part of the project, and this again is your portfolio project, will be psychological issues such as leadership, what theory, you'll be talking about what theories you're going to use, stress and coping. These are all things we're going to learn. You will learn. I will be teaching you, so it's not we learning. I always learn something though from you. Stress and coping, networking, those type of things. So again, I encourage you to print this document out, read through it, really look at week five, which gives you the outline, and that should help you with your essential questions. And then you can see next week you're going to collect your resources and you're going to start writing. So I hope that helps with that. And let me try to get back. There we go. With that part, now let me get back into week two. All right, so you're going to do the essential questions. Don't overcomplicate it. That's my, my main thing for you. Don't overcomplicate your essential questions but they are due at the end of the week. You will also do a reflection, and I, I will be posting a grading rubric on the reflection, and I encourage you to look at the grading rubric for the reflection. Typically, again, this is where people fight me, and they so sorry got distracted here, phone's ringing, um, pay attention to the grading rubric. I can't stress it enough. But make sure you're answering all the questions. In at least 75 words, describe the main points or ideas you learned this week. How did your interactions with your classmates and instructors build upon your learning? Now, when you're talking about this, don't forget you've had textbook. Tell me some things from the textbook. Don't just answer, focus on the discussion post. Give me more. And if you look at the grading rubric, that's where you'll see that it wants you to talk about. A, it's, it's taking, don't give me the basics. Take it into a bigger self-analysis, critical thinking on this. And honestly, don't focus on the words. Word count. People who get the exceptional category on the reflections in their discussion posts aren't focused on the minimum word count. Now, the other part of this reflection is, in at least 75 words, describe the main point you found most important. Identify how it relates to your life, community, or career. People often forget this one. So... I suggest you just have two big paragraphs, each one addressing each part of this. And it does have a grading rubric, a 300 level grading rubric. In the past, if you were at a 100 or 200, you may have automatically gotten 100 points for a reflection. That doesn't mm, typically happen here unless you're one of the rock stars. So I encourage you all to be the rock stars. But I really need you to follow the grading rubric because, again, when I open up to grade, it gives me a specific things I have to check. 
So I'm not trying to be the meanie or the over overly critical one. I follow the grading rubric. So you can have your discussion question, this essential question, and your reflection. I'm keeping an eye on the time here, and I see I'm getting a little long-winded, which I tend to be. I just want you to succeed. I've got office hours tomorrow at noon. Text, send me a text message if you need to. Thursday, I will be away from my desk, so I will need, and I won't have internet probably because I'm going to help my daughter move, so I need you to send me a text message if you have any questions Thursday, daytime, nighttime, because I'll probably be gone the whole time. So I'm going to wrap it up. Have an amazing, amazing week. Stay in touch. Let me know how I can help you succeed. And please follow the grading rubric. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.